Hello everyone and welcome to our next lecture of software design and architecture. By now we have almost reached towards the end of the design road that we have been following and in this lecture we are going to talk about UML deployment and component diagrams. As we have created our class design and that class design will finally be implemented and after the implementation we need to deploy the executables onto some machines and nodes and those machines and nodes are going to communicate with each other. So for representing the deployment and the communication we are going to use the deployment and communication diagrams of the UML. And for that purpose, the deployment diagrams will be used to model the mapping of your software system to the hardware. So you will be exactly telling that where and which piece of software will be deployed on what type and where on the hardware. So the elements of the software which usually are the components. So components can be considered as a group or combination of multiple classes. These elements are actually ultimately hosted onto some hardware or into the hardware plus software environment which we call as the nodes. And these nodes ultimately have to communicate with each other and to represent the communication of these nodes we will be using the communication diagram and showing the communication paths. So more specifically, the deployment diagram is actually used to show the deployment of the executable files. And of course, these executable files are deployed onto some uh, hardware, which we actually call as the computational loads. And those computational loads provides the processing power or processing services to our executable files. So with the help of deployment diagrams, we'll be able to show that our software elements are deployed onto some physical architecture and the communication is also being showed there for example you want to you want to show a uh, representation of a client and a server and you want to show that they are connected using a network you can use the deployment diagram the three dimensional boxes represent nodes for example software nodes or the hardware nodes we will be looking at those in the example. So here in this example, you can see a sample illustration of a deployment diagram where as I was talking about the nodes, these 3D boxes that you can see here are the nodes. And one more thing that you must observe at the first sight by looking at this diagram is that the nodes are also placed within the nodes. So we can nest a node inside another node. So for example, if you look closely at this node, we can very clearly see that this is a server. So it represents the name of the server and the type of the node is highlighted by using this notation. And then we can see that inside this node, we are representing a node of a server. And this also, also shows the name of the operating system. So you can also see that this node inside the server node is the operating system node with which we can show that this is operating system and tell the name of the operating system. So you must look very closely that we are following the same notation that we used in the class diagrams by using a colon and name of our class. Now finally inside this node we can see that we have a database node. So in short we are having a hardware which is server inside the server we are having the execution environment and this execution environment is made up of operating system and the database server so to be more specific you should consider this node as the database server similarly we are having the application server here and this application server is also represented as a node where we can very clearly see that this application is hosted on which machine and we are also specifying the name of operating system and 
once again this notation here tells that this is another server inside the application server we are having some other nodes so if you are familiar with java 2 enterprise edition you can see that we are showing the representation of our application but the main thing that you should notice here is that this application is communicating with this database on the other node so we are not only showing the nodes but we are also showing the communication of these nodes with the help of this deployment diagram and similarly one more type of communication can be seen here where soap or http type of messages are being sent to this server and from other nodes other client nodes the http requests can also be sent to this server and these two boxes here are representing the nodes where these nodes are the client or workstations so this is one client workstation and this is another client workstation so at the very high level we are showing how our final application is deployed uh, where we are having some clients the application server and the database server so guys remember that there could be two different types of nodes in the deployment diagrams the first type is the device node or a device which definitely represents the physical device or physical computing resource uh, which has a processing memory uh, for uh, which can be used for executing the software uh, and the second type of node is the execution environment node so we have seen an execution environment node and the device node in the previous examples uh, specifically the execution environment node is actually a software computing resource which runs within an outer node such as a computer so you could see that in a previous example we had a server the server will be called as the device node and then we had the operating system and the dbms software that operating system and the dbms software were the execution environment node and this is because that execution environment node uh, actually provides a service to host and execute other executable software elements for the example of execution environment nodes we can have an operating system which actually helps us to execute the programs a virtual machine in case of java or dotnet which is used to host and execute the java and dotnet programs we can have a database engine uh, such as postgresql uh, oracle or microsoft sql then we can have several web browsers which can actually host javascript java applets some flash programs or any other executable technology uh, we can have some workflow engines or servlet or ejb container in case of working with java 2 doubly and when we use the stereotype notation for representing the type of the node like server operating system database or browser please make sure that you know these are not the predefined uml stereotypes that means you can change them as per your requirement and also you have already seen the nesting of the execution environment node into an other execution environment node and that was seen when for example we can have a virtual machine node running in an operating system node and a particular execution environment node can be employed or not shown or indicated informally with a uml property saying for example you can simply say operating system linux so you can use this type of property settings if you do not want to create an explicit node for the operating system. Now when we talk about the connections between the nodes, these connections are actually called the communication paths and communication paths usually represent the network connections between the nodes. So for example, uh, application server can be connected with the help of a network connection with the database server so what we can do is we can label the communication path or those connections between the nodes with the protocol through which they are communicating so for example you can label a connection with http you can label to mention if this is a soap request and so on so for example an instance of a server computer is running an instance of 
the Linux operating system. And when you are creating the deployment diagrams and you can see that there is an underline under the name of an instance, it is automatically understood that that instance is a concrete instance. However, in general, you can omit the underlining of the names as specified by the UML. Or if you want, you can use the underline. So when going through the literature, you will see both of these examples. However, please remember that the concept of this underlining was first seen in the interaction diagrams where we used to underline the name of the classes and we used to use their colon for representing that this particular uh, box is representing an instance of that underlined class. So here in this example you can once again see that we have a node called web server and then we have a device node uh, which actually is representing uh, application server where our application is hosted and that application server is communicating to the database server and there is another uh, server which is the mainframe server which is communicating with our application server and then within the application server we are showing the course management for Kate web services so these are a couple of web services which are being run on the application server and then we are also showing an EJB container so this is a Java specific technology which is used to host servlets and uh, the beans so we are actually showing the internal representation of the EJB container so which is showing different components including the student component the seminar component schedule component and some other details of our application However, if we want, we can have a more compact representation of this similar diagram in another representation, which may look like this. So yes, this is a more compact representation. We are, we are showing our database with the help of a drum. So it can also be considered as a visual stereotype or you can say a convention for showing the databases. And here in the application server, we are not showing the very deep and internal details of the EJB container separately. Rather, we are only listing the names of the files instead of using separate containers for showing those files. And then we are having the mainframe, which is actually containing the legacy system in it and this legacy system is communicating with the application server so we are having this similar representation which is more compact as compared to the previous one whereas both of these diagrams show us the similar system mm -hmm.